All right, what's up, everybody? This is Cody, a.k.a. DFS Prodigy. I'm featuring the NFL DFS slate with my co-host and Daily Fantasy Talk Show. How's it going? What's going on, man? You know, how, how we living? How we living? Late night grinding, so we're going to knock <laughs> this video sure. out and basically just see you what we first like and basically just go over our core plays on who we're looking at for this Sunday slate. There's a lot of value that we both like and a lot of payups that we like. So let's just start off with the QB slate. So we have basically Lamar Jackson as the highest price, which I'm not getting Lamar Jackson. Are you fading him on your end? Yeah. I mean, going against Philly, you know, you get to think like Philly hasn't been great this year, but in the past couple of weeks, I've been getting a little bit better. Fletcher Cox has been getting to the QB pretty good. Um, so with Lamar's Lamar's knee, how it is, we don't really know. Um, and I'm I'm just going to full-on fade him with him being 7-7. Seven, seven, seven. Yeah, he's not running the ball like he normally does. So no. I'm just going to fade him. But I would like to pivot down to a guy in Aaron Rodgers. I think this is his time to shine against this Tampa Bay defense. And they lost a couple of guys on defense on Tampa Bay. So I'm looking to pair him with Devontae Adams, which Devontae Adams is also the highest price receiver. So I don't think the ownership will be there. I think the ownership will be off of them too. And they're going to look at Tampa Bay's defense and they think they're pretty good. But I like that ownership play basically in GPPs where I can pair Aaron Rodgers with Devontae Adams. We've seen both of them go off in the past. So he's my top guy. I've, um as on the QB side, who are you liking up top for you on your end? Well, actually, up top, honestly, if we're if we're just looking at those, you know, top couple guys, I do like Watson. Watson actually did show us a little bit last week. Um, I actually drafted him on literally every fantasy team that I had on ESPN, and he's been letting me down. But you know, the, he kind of woke up last week, looked a bit more like himself, but. Honestly, I'm more in the mid six range. I like Cam um, as long as, you know, the only thing with Cam is he had COVID. So everyone who's worried about, you know, will there be some rust? You know, what, what's going on there? Um, so that might drive the ownership down, which is why I'm going all in on him because he's a guy who can get two to three rushing touchdowns and outscore, you know, be the top scoring QB. So I like him a lot and I like that range a lot. I know we were talking about Gardner Minshew before the show, him and Matt Stafford both. Exactly. So this range of the 6,500 to basically 6,100 is guys I'm all going to try to fit in some lineups with. So this is going to be a week, a week where I'm going to play multiple lineups because I'm going to have multiple combos of receivers and quarterbacks that I like. I don't mind getting to the Matthew Stafford side. I think this game is high scoring. And this game is going to be a shootout with Matthew Stafford and Garner Minshew. Both guys are going to basically throw the ball downfield to their main guys in Kenny Galladay. And with DJ Chark out, we can look at some value for Gardner Minshew. I think more of the ownership will be on Matthew Stafford, but I would not mind pivoting up to Gardner Minshew. We also have Kirk Cousins, who's facing Atlanta, which we've seen Atlanta, how bad they are in defense. I mean, Dillon should have a field day, in my opinion, with Kirk Cousins. So, I wouldn't mind doing the combo with Kirk Cousins and Adam Thielen. So this price range is, like I said, is the guys that I'm going to get to a lot. Like you can also get to a guy, well, like you said, with Cam Newton, who we've seen him. Yes, he's going to have rust, but we've seen him in the office and look what he did. He trained as hard as he could in the offseason and he came back even stronger. So I think that the public is going to say that he's going to have rust, but I like his ownership and I don't think he'll have any rust in my opinion. I think he's going to come out and try to ball out versus this Denver defense. But down here lower, I'm looking at a guy and potentially Nick Foles. I think Nick Foles is going to be a little bit interesting to me. I wouldn't mind pairing him with Allen Robertson. That's his go-to guy. Robertson has gotten a ton of targets, no matter who it is with Trubisky or Foles, which Foles, yes, he threw an interception last week, but that was all Allen Robertson's fault for volleying it to the defender. So I wouldn't mind getting into Nick Foles. Who are you liking down here in this price range? Yeah, I'm actually liking a guy on the flip side of Watson. I'm like Tannehill a lot. Um, Tannehill looked really good against the Bills, and that's honestly no easy feat there. Um, I mean, he's been super efficient this year. He got a rushing touchdown last game, which obviously I'm not going to count on that all the time from him. But 
Um, you know, a lot of teams are making their game plans on Derrick Henry and Derrick Henry alone. And then, you know, Tannehill comes out of nowhere and he'll throw for 250, 300 passing yards, get two, three touchdown passes in there. So I think at this price at 5,900, I think that Tennessee Houston game could be a bit high scoring. Um, but other than that, there's not really a lot of value this week. Uh, we don't even know like who's starting for Washington at this point. I mean, you could try to pick and choose from that one because they're playing the Giants. So maybe if you want to throw a dart at Kyle Allen, just because his price is what? What is it? Fifty two, fifty one. Way down 51? here. Yeah, fifty one. Yeah, fifty one hundred. So, I mean, if you really wanted to take a dart throw tomorrow and hope that Kyle Allen lasts more than one half, which he couldn't do last week. Um, I guess you could throw one here, but I, in terms of value, I think I like Tannehill a lot better. Exactly. I mean, literally Kyle Allen is priced right next to Jalen Hurts at 5000 Kyle Allen is cheaper than Brett Rippian, who's not even starting for Denver. Exactly. So <laughs> let's move on to basically the receivers, and we'll come back to running backs, but I wanted to go over receivers on who we're basically looking at to combo with so and we'll just kind of go from there so up top we have Devontae Adams so Devontae Adams is the highest price receiver for a good reason I don't mind getting to Devontae Adams whatsoever he's going to be the highest price guy obviously and um, you can get to a guy with AJ Brown like you said with Tannehill combo there's a ton of guys all over the place that you can get to basically that wouldn't mind. Who are you looking at getting to? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, like you were talking about, if you're going for an Aaron Rodgers, you might want to pair him with, you know, the number one receiver, whoever you get at quarterback. So in terms of where I'm going, you know, I'm going more of – for me, it's kind of different because I, I like Cam Newton, so I'm probably not going to go with Julian Edelman just because um, just because Julian Edelman's not going to put up the numbers that these top guys can. But, like, if you go with a Kirk Cousins, definitely pairing him with Thielen or even Jefferson um, is definitely a good move. So, if you um, – in, in terms of, you know, top receivers, I think it's good to definitely try to pair at least one with your quarterback. And then, you know, like maybe look at a guy like Juju Smith-Schuster who, you know, obviously we saw Claypool go off last week. Like, unbelievable. Um so now everyone's going to put their game plan towards him. And now we got Juju Smith-Schuster, who's going against Cleveland. And uh, I think he could really pop off there. So um, probably take one receiver, pair it with your quarterback, go with, you know, a good matchup for, you know, one or two others, and then try to find a value somewhere. I think that's what I'm going to be doing. Exactly. So I wouldn't even mind doing basically a pairing with Kenny Dalday and Matthew Stafford than running it back with Chenault Jr. Because they're going to keep that game. That game is going to be a shootout. It's going to be high scoring. You could always run it back with Chenault Jr. when you have Kenny Galladay up top. That gives you basically a one-two punch that I don't mind whatsoever. So even if you wanted to be cute, you could run it with Allen Robertson, Nick Foles, and have a DJ Moore or a Robbie Anderson. There's multiple ways on this slate to be different, which that's what I'm liking. So, like you said, we have Alan, Adam Thielen up top for 7,300, who's a value, in my opinion, when you have Calvin Ridley at 7,800. I wouldn't mind getting Adam Thielen whatsoever, and he's going to get the targets. Just like Alan Robinson's going to get peppered with targets, like I was saying earlier. There's multiple ways on this slate to basically run it back and to hit the guys that you want at receiver. Salary is not that huge of a deal to me on this slate at all because we don't have guys like Patrick Mahomes or stuff like that at all or Diane Prescott with MRI Cooper. So there's multiple ways to go on this slate versus receivers. So I would watch the status with GJ Chark because his status is questionable right now. But guys down here, I, like you said, A.J. Brown, I like A.J. Brown some. We need to watch Julian yeah. Edelman's status because he's questionable too. So yeah, he'll play. He'll play, yeah. I figured he'll play. He's questionable every week. <laughs> exactly. I wouldn't even mind getting to a guy like Keelan Cole if DJ Chark is out. Talk to me about a guy you like down here in this price range. So in this price range in particular, I think one guy that could pop up that I don't think we mentioned really uh, when we were talking before the show, uh, T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton, um, who 
usually we're seeing up in like the high six K range. Usually um, we're seeing them in what the five K range this week. I think I saw on that. Uh, yeah. Five, 5,000 for a number one receiver guys. Like T Y Hilton is starting to get the target to on. I think he had his uh, biggest target share last week. Um, and I think he's just building some rapport with Philip Rivers. I think obviously Philip Rivers is not used to a guy like T.Y. Hilton because when Philip Rivers played in Los Angeles, the only speed guy he really had was Mike Williams. And Mike Williams played like four games in a season because he was always hurt. So he's trying to get used to this new type of receiver. And I think uh, I think they're finally starting to find it going against Cincinnati tomorrow. Um, so I think T.Y. Hilton's a guy you could look at. Um, but one guy I'm looking at really in particular, um, way down in the value range, it's not even on the screen yet, it's going to be Jeff Smith on the Jets. Now, I don't usually like to play up the Jets because, for one, I'm a Patriots fan, so F the Jets, right? Um, but then, two, they just suck. So trying to, you know, fit a Jets guy in your lineup is usually kind of scary. But Jeff Smith, this guy right here is a flat 3K. Last two games, he's gotten 20 total targets. He got nine against the Denver, and he got 11 last week. Um, and he's a guy who's literally minimum price, guys. Like, all you really need from the guy is, like, five points, and he's getting nine to 11 targets. So this is a guy that I am going to be hammering into my lineup tomorrow, and you guys should be too. Literally. Look at the targets. So – I like him a lot, yeah, too. So the only thing about last week is he only had three catches out of his nine targets. But, like, I mean, eventually the, the catches will get there. I mean, he had seven for 81 against Denver, and that's plenty to pay off a 3K price. So, basically, we just need him to catch more of these targets. <laughs> well, and he's facing the Dolphins defense, which we don't have that normally goes. And he's facing the Dolphins, exactly. I didn't even get that far, and I was already convinced on him. Exactly. So let's go back to running backs. Which which running backs are you liking from your personal view? Oh, running backs. So one guy I really like up top, um, because I'm I'm kind of into that Texans uh Titans game tomorrow. I'm really liking Derrick Henry up top. Um, you know, the Houston defense has struggled a bit this year, the twenty third against opposing running backs. So uh Derrick Henry should have you know, lower ownership, especially because the guy below him in Madison, Madison's going to have really inflated ownership tomorrow because there's no Dalvin Cook going against Atlanta. So Matt's a guy who, like, I'm not 100% convinced on just because we really haven't seen him in that starter role. And uh, I think this honestly could take some ownership off of Henry, which is honestly unwarranted because Derrick Henry uh, is a guy who can score – a lot of points really fast. So he's going to be my favorite spend up. How about you, man? So I'm liking a guy like Aaron Jones. So the Buccaneers defense is without beat of a. So that proves that there's going to be a huge gap in the line. And he also has the pass catching ability. So he's like a prototype of Christian McCaffrey. So I'm all over Aaron Jones this week. I think the ownership is going to be low on him because you have Madison and $400 cheaper, which in Madison – Play him in cash, play him in double ups, just lock him and load him. Yeah. And those formats. But at GPP, we want to be different, obviously. So go up to Aaron Jones or a guy like Darren, Derek Henry, like you were saying. We have guys yeah. in this range that you can go to, just like James Conner playing in his hometown. He's ready to go in this matchup. He's looked better and better as week goes by. I think he's going to be great this week versus Cleveland. I also think you can go to a guy like Kareem Hunt without Nick Chubb. He stepped up. And he's been the feature back. You can go to a Kareem Hunt guy. You can even go to a guy like Mike Davis, who has been amazing with Christian McCaffrey out. He's been catching the ball in the backfield. He's just been proving his worth. So this price range between uh, 7,600 to basically 6,900, there's a bunch of pivots you can go to to get off of that Madison chalk. So I wouldn't mind getting to any of these guys basically whatsoever. If you want to pair Aaron Jones with Rodgers and Devontae Adams, I would love that. In GPP, I'm definitely going to look at that option because, like I said, he has a pass catching ability, just like James Conner does with Big Ben, just like Teddy B does with with Mike Davis. You can go with these other guys and play with the low ownership on this slate because it's a little bit different than normal slates, in my opinion. What are your thoughts on this price range? 
Yeah, so this, this is actually a really wide open running back um, pool this week, um, which honestly it makes it fun, you know, because, you know, there's always the chalky guys that you're like, you know, they're going to have 20% ownership, 15% ownership. And this week, you know, the only guy really in that area is Madison because he's playing the Falcons. But, I mean, you look at a guy like, you know, James Robinson, My, uh, Miles Sanders, Jonathan Taylor. I mean, these guys are top-tier running backs with pretty good, I mean, outside of Sanders, pretty good matchups. And they're probably going to come in with maybe 10% ownership, maybe less. Like, James Robinson is probably going to have the lowest ownership he's had since week one because he proved everyone wrong and he started picking up ownership. And then, you know, the last two weeks, he really hasn't hit everyone's expectations of him. So now it's probably going to dial back a little bit. Now I think we could see him at around eight to 9% ownership. And then Jonathan Taylor going against Cincinnati, uh, he should be definitely like 20% owned, but I don't think he will be because everyone's going to be spending up for Madison because they just think that Madison's going to go off for 30 points. Um, but in reality, Madison's probably going to get 10 to 15, and then we're going to see Jonathan Taylor probably equate that. So uh, if I can save, you know, a good 800 bucks to go to Jonathan Taylor, I'm more than willing to do that. Exactly. So now if we go down a little bit lower, a guy you should lock in in all formats is David Montgomery. David Montgomery is facing the Carolina defense, the run defense. They're the worst defense in the league for rushing. And he has Nick Foles back as his QB, who Nick Foles checks down to him a bunch. I'm walking and loading David Montgomery no matter what. We saw him, what he can do against Tampa Bay's defense and find the end zone there. He should, with a shadow of a doubt, lock and load him basically in your lineups on all formats. He's only 5,800. You have a guy like Melvin Gordon who's outpriced higher than him, and you have Miles Gaskin only $400 less than him. I don't see why he's priced as low on this sort of slate. I'll lock and load him on all formats. Who's the guy that you're looking at down here? Yeah, so I know we were talking about Montgomery a little bit before the show. I really like, you know, I really like him going against Carolina. Uh, Carolina literally has the worst run defense in the league. Um, but if we scroll down a little bit, I mean, I like Gibson a lot too. Gibson's a good pivot uh, if Montgomery does pick up ownership. Um, and then Gaskin. Gaskin actually is, you know, a guy who probably is going to get overlooked a little bit because, you know, he's not the number one. He's not the every down back, I guess you could say. Um, and they're going against the Jets, so the Jets are, again, a very bottom tier. But I think one of my favorite uh, running back picks for tomorrow is going to be Damian Harris from New England. Damian Harris got hammered the ball against the Chiefs, and he ran for exactly 100 yards. Now, he didn't pick up a touchdown, but that was going against the Chiefs defense. The Chiefs defense have been very good this year. And that, and that was Damian Harris just, you know, getting it done, getting it done. And he was one of those guys that would, you know, break a four or a four or a four-yard run, and then he'd break off a 20. So I think he's going to be a guy who at 5K is going to be very good. And, yeah, he's going against Denver's run defense. That's ranked pretty good. But that's going to knock down Damian Harris's price. And you know the Patriots are going to try to run it down their throats. So I'm really liking Damian Harris here at this price range. Exactly, exactly. So let's now go to basically tight ends. And we'll – basically for my tight end strategy all this week is basically just filling it in with who I can just fit in that price range. There's not really a top guy I'm looking at for tight end. There's not really the best options, the best options like we normally have. in the Travis Kelsey and the Zachary, who's normally the norm, – like his normal self or Lamar. we have Mark Andrews yes but he's with Lamar Jackson who is also pretty high priced who are you thinking on this slate for the tight end yeah so tight ends are interesting um you know I was looking at you know that Tennessee Texans game I do like Jonu Smith um obviously the Titans are still dealing with a little bit of COVID issues so um Jonu is probably the number two target uh, in Tannehill's mind when he's looking to pass. I mean, he's got A.J. Brown on the outside, and he's got Jonu um, there on the inside at the tight end spot. So um, Jonu's probably my favorite tight end priced above 5K, um, mostly because, I mean, Gasecki is really streaky. I mean, even though they are playing the Jets, he's, he's a guy that could literally get one catch or he could go off for, you know, 100 per game. So um, I don't think I'd want to spend up in that uh, area. 
Um, but I do like Jonu. I think he has a safer floor than some of these guys up here. But I know we were talking about TJ Hawkinson before the show. He's got a good matchup there and the game that should be pretty high total. So um, I think him and Jonu are going to be my two favorites for tomorrow. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, me personally, I don't mind getting to a guy like Evan Ingram in a Washington matchup who's Washington's awful versus tight ends. And I think he's going to look to him for the short yardage and possibly the end zone. So I don't mind Evan Ingram over 4,900. I don't mind Jonu Smith, like you were saying. Um, Zach Ertz is playing Baltimore, which is scary to me, even though he's low price. I wouldn't mind taking a step at him in GPP formats. But given that, uh, I'm going to probably, like I said, pay down or just going to fill the blank with my tight ends. Look to Rowlett Nick Van who's pretty cheap. He's facing New England, yes. But again, look at his price. You can't go wrong with just taking a dark throw at a guy like that. So I wouldn't mind getting to him all the way down here with no offense now who is completely out for this week. Talk to me, a guy also the same price down here that you like. Yeah, so um, Vanette was actually interesting because I didn't really think about him until you brought him up. But, yeah, that's a, that's a good price to get a tight end at. But I was looking at the other 3,100 guy in Trey Burton. Uh, Trey Burton has finally worked his way back from the injuries he was dealing with. Um, you know, good to see him back in um, on a, you know, decently good team in the Colts. Um, he's got to get used to Philip Rivers because Philip Rivers kind of sucks still. But, um you know, and he started to pick up a bit of targets last week, and now we got no Mo Alley Cox, so he's going to be sliding in as the number one tight end for this week. So I'm really liking Trey Burton here at this 3100 price tag. I think uh, if you're looking for value somewhere at the tight end spot, I think you can find it right here. Exactly. So that kind of wraps up for tight ends for me. Talk to me about what defenses defenses you're liking. Yeah. So for defense. Um, if Denver does not have Drew Locke tomorrow, um, please lock in New England's defense if you want to win money. No pun intended, by the way. They're, they're, like, literally, there's no way that Denver scores more than 10 points if Brett Rippian steps in as quarterback for them tomorrow. Now, if Drew Locke does play, I still think the Patriots defense is plenty in play. But, you know, if you're a bit worried about, you know, Drew Locke could, you know, get hot or whatever – you could definitely pivot to like the Colts defense who um, is going against the Cincinnati team who got uh, what three points last week against the Ravens uh, and Joe Burrow all of a sudden does not look the same right. like he, he was looking like rookie of the year, you know, uh, at the beginning, but now, now he's starting to fade off a little bit. Um, I also do like the Steelers defense going against Cleveland. Interestingly enough, Baker Mayfield is questionable. So I think he's going to play. But, you know, knowing that he's going to be banged up going into this game and the Steelers' defense is no joke. So, um, you know, if, if you want to go save some $100, I'd say Steelers is a good bet. Exactly, man. We're pretty much on the same page. I'm locking in Patriots defense if Locke is out. I like the Colts going against the net. Cincinnati, who Joe Mixon's just kind of streaky. We don't know. We're going to give Joe Mixon half the time. Burrow's not being the Burrow that he was in the very beginning of the season. And that's just basically where I'm looking at is I'm probably going to pay up for defenses. But I'm going to pay down for tight end and just go off my combos with QB and receiver and then fill in the book of running backs. Do you have any last thoughts before we wrap this up, man? No, nah, man. I think we're good. I think we covered it all. All right, everybody. So that pretty much wraps it up for me, guys. Again, this is. Me, DFS Prodigy, and I got my friend with Daily Fantasy Talk Show, and that pretty much wraps up this NFL Sunday Night Slave. Have a good one, everybody.